welcome back to another video guys. I am here today to share with you all the knowledge I know and have about the build mode keyboard shortcuts. This is for PC, not Mac. I'm sorry. I don't have a Mac, so I can't really say, but I think a lot of the keybinds are similar, but you may have to adjust a few of the buttons for Mac users. But yeah, this is gonna be a video where I go over all the keyboard shortcuts that I'm aware of, and we are going to learn how to best use them so that you can make your building better and easier and faster. Even though I'm not a fast builder, this still saves me a lot of time by knowing these key bindings. I'm excited to share those with you. Um, excuse me? <laughs> Don't tell me to go to school. This is a high school me, by the way. First thing we're gonna wanna do is type in shift control C so that you open up your console. We recommend turning on testing cheats enabled through because that will make it so you can do all the other things that we talk about today. The next cheat that you want to turn on is bb.moveobjects on. All right, and you should get verification that move objects cheat is on and that's gonna allow us to do a lot of cool stuff. Hit shift control C again to close. Now we're gonna go into build mode. Uh, we're at the high school that is currently a work in progress. It's a renovation of the original that is inspired by the One Tree Hills high school, but I haven't gotten to the back or very much of the inside yet like I did a lot of the front this will be in a speed build video very soon if you're in live mode you want to make sure you have a sim on the lot that you want to build on for a couple reasons it helps for adding items to the household inventory and also if you want to keep a budget on the house then you're able to build with the budget okay let's start with basic keybinds so say you want to just delete an item grab it Hit the delete key on your keyboard. Easy as that. If you want it to go to your household inventory instead, hit the backspace key. And then if you're not in free build mode, like if you have a sim on the lot, then it'll go into that sim's inventory and you can like keep it for later. Next, we have rotating an object. You can rotate it by hitting the caret left and right. This is left, this is right. Left, right, left, right, left, right. There you go. After you've grabbed it, you can kind of put it wherever you want. And that's an easy way to rotate without doing the more advanced stuff that I'm gonna be talking about next. If you want to place an object so it's say closer to a wall or closer to another object, like say you wanted this to go over here and be like right up against this. But if you rotate it and put it, there's a gap. To fix that, grab your item and hold down Alt. You should have free movement of that item, no matter where you want to put it. As long as you have the build uh, cheats on, you could even do something like that. I mean, don't recommend doing that. So then you can just shift it a little bit closer and make it feel a little bit tighter. If you want to just rotate an object, grab your object, hold Alt, click, and spin. And then you can rotate it at any angle you want. Beautiful. Another great tool is the increase or decrease items or brush size. You can do that by left bracket, right bracket. You can make a giant trash can and live in it. Not really, but there's some fun stuff you can do by resizing objects. Uh, you cannot resize like mirrors, they will break and windows, but most regular objects you can. It's good for like placing a decor item down that you're like, oh, it's a little bit too big or actually, I feel like rug is a good example of this. So say you wanted a rug, but this rug is too small. Make it bigger, make it smaller, make it bigger. Do whatever you want. There you go, beautiful. Now you have a rug, whatever size you want it to be. And you can do that with any object. Like you can even make plants bigger. Let's do that as like a corner one instead of this tiny little pot. Some objects don't look good bigger or smaller. So you have to be careful. Look at this. If you shrink this down, the shadow is super bad. And the shadow on this is bad anyway. So I think that's the problem is the lighting on it. But if you make it bigger, it looks okay. But if you make it smaller, it doesn't. Next thing is undoing and redoing your last action. So say I didn't like what I just did here and I wanna go backwards. Control Z and it will go all the way back until I don't know how far back it can go. It's basically instead of hitting this button up here, see it says it there even, Control Z, Control Z, you go backwards. And then if you wanted to redo, if you're like, oh, never mind, I like that plant. Control Y will go forward. So it'll go back 
the other direction. Also, those keybinds are common if you have used any editing softwares, like Control Z is very, very common for, for undo. And now we're gonna go to even more advanced hotkeys. You see how it moves a half a tile? And it makes it kind of like, oh, I wanna put it here, but I don't wanna alt click it. I want it to be more exact. All you're gonna need to do is hit F5. And now it'll move in a quarter of a tile, which is actually something I recently learned. I didn't realize this was a thing until recently. It makes it so you can line things up better because usually I'll just alt place a lot of things. But I think now that I know this, like it'll be a little bit easier to like, actually line stuff up more perfectly and not have it be weird. I think that's a handy one to know. You can turn that off by hitting F5 again, and now it'll only go uh, half a tile. If you wanted to go crazy and duplicate items, a good example of this is when you are building plants and stuff. I like to use this. You grab your item, hit Shift, and then click and you can rotate. I'm holding down alt and shift and it will put it down wherever I decide to spin it. So alt, shift, click will do that. And you can duplicate items super quickly and have like a million things real quick instead of trying to duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. And now we're just gonna go backwards because I didn't wanna do that yet. <laughs> Hopefully that was a handy tip as well. Uh, another really cool thing is the quarter flooring. So say you put a tile down and you're like, I want this to go at an angle this way, but like you can't do that. But what you can do is control F and it will turn into quarter tiles. And then do some cool stuff and then control F to turn it back. Look at that. I mean, it's not ideal. I probably would use a different uh, swatch for this, but I think that looks cool that you can have like the diagonal hot thing or in a kitchen it's useful. Like if you want a certain, you know, angle in a certain area to separate the room, it's very good for that. So control F allows you to place it all over the place. Wait, why does it look like it's, it's moving? Weird. Okay, and now some quick buttons for switching between all the tools. I used to always just like click on the tools and be like, all right, I'm, I, this is a sledgehammer, all right. This is the plus, this is the eyedropper, this is the thing. But each of them has a keybind to them. You'll see that. So select, click on H on your keyboard. If you want to duplicate, I'm gonna add another shelf. You can hit E on your keyboard and that will bring up that tool and you are able to then use everything you've learned so far. Alt placing, F5, Alt, click to rotate. The next common one would be the sledgehammer tool. So if you want to delete an object, easy, hit pay. You'll get the hang of it if you start just using them, but, and it does make processing of building faster. And then the final one is the design and swatch tool, which is R for, I don't know how to remember some of these. I don't know, but they're just random, but they make sense. So R and then click, and then you can cycle through all the swatches. And even better way to cycle through swatches if you want to kind of just see how it looks. Once you selected your item, hit the plus to cycle through all the swatches one by one before putting it down. Kind of gives you a look on like how things feel before having to make a commitment. One thing is once you've placed the item, if you try to hit the plus and minus, it'll just zoom in and out. And then you want to go back if you decide to change it. So this is only for if you first select the item before you've placed it down once, it'll work. Otherwise it'll do zoom in and out. Also, if you eye drop and make a new one, it will cycle through as well. I was a little confused at first too. I was like, why is it zooming in and out? All right, we figured it out. We're good, we're good. That is also a newer tip that I learned. Now, if you wanted to get rid of the stuff you put down, you have too many things, get the sledgehammer and hold shift, click and drag and you'll be able to select anything in that space. So you wanna click on the first item and then kind of drag it to whichever other items you wanna delete and that's a quick way of deleting. Same thing kind of for walls. You can shift and click to delete multiple walls at the same time. And then if you want to build a wall, you hit B, but also say you're making a room, but then you're like, ah, uh, this is just gonna be a square anyway. If you hit shift, click and drag, you will build a room instead. And you can quickly, without having to swap back and forth between the two. There is no shortcut for the room tool, but it is a kind of hidden thing. Oh, it says here, hold shift to switch to the room tool. 
that's just kind of how that works. Perfect. I am ruining this place. Also to go in between floors quickly, you can do page up all the way through each level or page down, even underground. I like to use that when I'm building to quickly like go between the floors, but you can also use it when you're in gameplay. Next, we have roofing. So say you wanna make a roof and it looks cool and isn't just like a generic, normal, everyday roof. You know that you can click and drag, right? At face value, it's very simple, but there is a lot of flexibility that you can do with this. So first, if you hold shift and click on the E, it will do one side only. If you don't, it will do both sides. I use shift when doing my roofs a lot because then you can get it like just a little bit more of a eave on the front. In the back, you can change it, do whatever you want. Same thing with these eaves. It will do everything if you don't hit any buttons, but if you hit shift, it will just do the one side. And now you can have a lopsided house. Why not? And then another one is to smoothly control the pitch the up arrow, normally it will go at increments that you cannot control. It's like, oh, well, I don't want it that high. I just want it a little bit lower. So all you need to do is hit alt and it will be exactly where you want it. You can move it as smooth as you can move your mouse. You see how much of a difference it is? So hold alt, select, and there you go. And then the last thing about roofing, advanced roofing. So you know you can do stuff like this, right? It's like, oh, okay, cool, I can do that or that. What if I wanted to do like a fancy like fairy tale type look? Shift C will turn on advanced roofing. You see how that changed? You see the, the orbs here? It adds two more orbs. Actually, it adds a bunch more orbs. <laughs> Four more orbs, basically. So now, if you click on those orbs and kind of tweak it, it will allow you to have this kind of like funkier shape that isn't just like so straight. It looks like, um, I don't know, like a cartoon roof or something. I hope this gave you some insight into a lot of advanced building tips and tricks and keyboard shortcuts that you should know if you are a builder in The Sims 4, like me. I'm sure there's some stuff I missed, but I tried to get as much as I knew, and some of it is stuff that I'm still kind of trying to remember too, so I'm glad I'm doing this tutorial, and I hope you guys enjoy it and get good use out of it. Oh, the garbage. Thank you guys so much for watching. Look forward to the next video and the speed build of this, which will probably be out by the time this video goes out anyways. All right, thank you guys for watching. Hope you got some enjoyment out of this video, learned some things, and we will see you in the next one. Well, my character is like not even talking right now. Of course she would. All right. All right, I'm done. Bye.